Want to see how I made this fun piece in just a few minutes and using only three colors of alcohol ink? Awesome. Pull up a chair and I'll show you. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y from Miriam's Nature. A while back, I made this piece off camera to show you in a video how to add these cute little bubbles to your work. Since the airing of that video, I've been asked a bunch how I made these little white rays that you see here in the piece. Well, the truth is, <laughs> they were an accident. I was squeezing my little alcohol bottle to add a few drops somewhere else on the piece, and instead of dropping straight down, the alcohol kind of squirted out or sputtered in a mostly horizontal way across this area. And since alcohol removes color, well, this happened. The proverbial happy accident, you know. So I was left to wonder if I could make it happen again. But the little bottle wouldn't cooperate. It kept doing its job properly and dropping the drops straight down. Where's a defective tool when you need one, you know? <laughs> so I got to thinking, what if I blew the alcohol horizontally across the canvas or piece of drawer myself? I tried tubing, straws, an air puffer, an airbrush, but I had the best luck with my blow dryer. I think because of the wide stream of air. I rarely ever got the really fine lines that you saw in the original piece. Instead, I got fun, more versatile, useful results, I think. And I love them. Yeah, this was a lot of fun, but I was taking away color. So naturally I wanted to add color. Clearly the next scientific step had to be blowing the alcohol inks themselves, right? <laughs> I mean, come on, I had to, right? <laughs> That's the excuse that I'm going with. It was for the science of it all. Not because I'm an alcohol ink crazed girl who loves making a mess. <laughs> okay. Preparing for the possible mess, I set up a nice little barrier for myself so that I wouldn't squirt alcohol ink all over the room. And given my experience with making these, I was pretty sure the best approach for me was to use the thinned down version of the alcohol inks. So I thinned them down with alcohol, like I did in the videos for these guys. I figured this would ensure that I would get these sort of delicate little transition lines and not the thick dark ones that can happen when you use straight alcohol ink. And it would also use up a heck of a lot less <laughs> ink. Now, do I think this can be done with any alcohol ink? Sure. But I'm partial to Jacquard's Pinata inks for this because they're so highly pigmented that they thin down beautifully and a little goes a long, long way. On average, I fill one of these little bottles. This is a 30 milliliter or one ounce bottle. I fill one of these halfway with 91% isopropyl alcohol and I add a range of 10 to 20 drops of ink to start. So you'll find that every color is different and it also depends on how intense you want your colors to be. Oh, by the way, if you've ever wondered, there are about 600 drops of liquid to an ounce or 600 drops to 30 milliliters. Okay, now for this piece, I only used three colors. Since many of you are just starting and may not have a lot of colors yet, let's use the same three again. And I used the three primaries. So Senorita Magenta, Baja Blue, and Sun Bright Yellow. I know that in school we learned that red was a primary, but in ink, magenta is the primary, just like in your printer. For this project, you'll need something to paint on. I'm using Dorlar, the matte version of it. 
If you've never seen a video where I've used it before, Duralar is a polyester film. It's about the thickness of a sheet of paper. This version that I'm using is translucent and it is double-sided so you can paint on either side. You'll need alcohol ink, isopropyl alcohol, 90% or higher is best, little squeeze bottles, a blow dryer, not a heat gun. We're going to be blowing a lot on the surface of the Duralar, so using a heat gun would warp your piece. So a blow dryer, even set at the highest temperature, will not affect the Duralar. And optionally, clear tape if you want to make the fun little border around your piece. And if you have one, a Lazy Susan can be very helpful. I've gone ahead and taped my piece of Duralar down to this glass stand so that A, it stays flat, B, we'll have that nice border when I remove the tape, C, well, you know, so that it doesn't blow away. Because <laughs> we're gonna be using that blow dryer a lot. Okay, let's do this. Since I want my rays to radiate sort of out in this direction and my blow dryer is here, I'm going to turn my canvas or piece of Duralar in this direction so that when I'm blowing, it'll blow across this way. Now for this technique to work, the blow dryer is on pretty much the entire time. So I'm going to play faint music in the background so that you're not just here listening to crickets as I lower the volume of the blow dryer. I'll pop in now and then with a pointer or tip but watching will hopefully show you a lot. Now, in the beginning, I'm literally dropping drops directly in front of the stream of air. This is a tad messier because you're blowing free falling drops, which don't all land on your paint dig, by the way, but it's a heck of a lot of fun. <laughs> I love doing this. Remember, you need to protect that area, that part. I've got a piece of plastic sort of wrapped around um, there, and it'll sort of take a lot of the hits. Theoretically, I could stop now. I've had fun, I've made my little mess, but there's more we can do. Let's add a lot of color. I'm going to switch over to what I'm calling writing with the ink on the surface. So I'm literally dragging the bottle with the ink along the surface in front of a continuous stream of air. Now be careful not to press too hard on the surface so that you don't scratch your Duralar. Surprisingly, I find that this technique with the continuous stream of air gives me more control than when I'm, say, dropping a little puddle of ink on the surface and then taking a straw or a can bear or my airbrush and then taking aim at that little puddle that I put down. 
I think it's one of those things you have to experience to get what I'm talking about. Having the air on the entire time lets you make adjustments as you go. And you kind of get to draw your line where you want it as the air is taking it for you and continuing the line. It's a cool effect. Well, so far I'm already loving this, but I'm kind of wishing there was a little bit more purple. I've got a lot of pink. I've got some decent oranges. I've got yellow sprinkled throughout, but um, I'm missing some blue and I want to pull more of this purple through. The tricky part is that when you mix all three colors, you get more like of a brown. So that's the tricky part is trying to balance the pink and the blue to get that purple without getting too much yellow mixed in because it takes it to the brownish tone, which is still pretty, but not what I'm after. Every now and then I would rub the bottle back and forth on dark spots to sort of break them up and let the new ink wash away those dark parts. Now I didn't want to remove all of those type of lines because some of them had a frilly, roughly look that I really liked. This looked a lot to me like strips of silky fabric. The occasional frilly edge really helped with that illusion. A difference to keep in mind when writing lines like this, instead of putting down little puddles though, and also by putting these lines in front of a continuous stream of air, is that you're going to get rather long blown streams, unless you put down a very small amount, which I wasn't doing so much in this piece. So keep that in mind as you work with this technique too. So like if you wanna make flowers, for example, the little, lines that you write down with your bottle need to be really short so that you don't have really long petals. Now here, I really thought this area had gone too dark and it became uninteresting too, I think. But the wonder of alcohol ink is that if you're working on a non-porous surface like this Duralar, it's so easy to correct whatever you don't like by literally washing it away and replacing it. In this case, with a slightly lighter, more varied look. point I realized that I don't have enough yellow at the beginning which I kind of wanted. Again <laughs> lucky this is alcohol ink because that's so easy to fix. This. this was worth the work. The yellow coming over to here is great. I think I just want to touch up a little bit in the green and I'm going to be very, very happy with this piece. It's going to require a little bit more blue.
only little speck here. This is a smaller piece of Duralar. The border is actually here, out here, and down here. It's running right in front of my nail. So I've got a couple of little white spots here and here that when I pull off the tape, so I'm gonna try to just color them in lightly. Hmm, I wonder if I kind of approach it from this angle a little. I think that's everything. Okay. I love it. Let us peel off the tape for the extra fun. And the best part about this too, I mean, except for the plastic, which is just, I'll take you down to see. There's really no cleanup to do. So now let me show you my little work environment. So all I have is a cardboard box that I cut and set up around the periphery. And then I've clipped, cut up grocery bags to the top so that they surround me kind of like a shower curtain. So that when I go to spritz, I don't end up spritzing alcohol ink <laughs> across the room. And it's really not that messy. I mean, that's really what flew off. So, and even my Lazy Susan, um, I have a piece of freezer paper on top of it and it didn't get hit that badly either. Just a little bit of the periphery because this was taking the brunt of everything, which is as it should be. But, so it's not like you have to set up like an armored tank around you to protect you from this. And the other fun thing about making this piece is I was never wearing gloves. I was holding a blow dryer in one hand and little bottles in the other hand, so I never really needed to be wearing gloves. Let's do the tape reveal. Seriously, this is one of my favorite parts. It's like I'm wrapping a gift. Now stay tuned until the end for close-up photos including an unseen piece. This is a good moment to hit that thumbs up and click on subscribe and the bell. And start thinking about where you're going to share this video. The more you can share it, the more it helps my channel and then the more videos I can make. It's got, got a couple little blips here to clean up. Got this, and then one over there, but really, other than that, nothing major. I love it. It's so vibrant. It's just, this one is a lot brighter than the one that I'd made originally. So I'm curious as to which one you like better. This one looks more underwatery to me. And this one is really bold and happy and just, I think there's more definition in this one. Like individual strands because some of them go in all different directions as opposed to these which are more straight in one very clear direction. So that part is up to you which way you want to go. I'm definitely curious to hear what you think, which one you like better, and tell me if you would try this and if you're excited about this new technique. I think it lends itself really well to backgrounds, for cards, scrapbooking layouts, as well as beautifully framed art. If you use this technique, please let me know and tag Miriam's Nature so that I get to see what you've done. Now, would you like to see more videos like this? Take a quick second to give this a thumbs up and please share it with friends and groups. 
click subscribe and the bell so you don't miss any of the fun ideas coming up. Links for everything that I used in the video can be found in the description box below and in the convenient shop that I set up for all of you so that you can easily find items across Amazon without having to do a search for each individual thing. Clicking on a link immediately before any purchase you make on Amazon helps this channel keep going. All right, as always, thank you for watching. Go let your creative nature shine. See you next time. Bye now.